Hello everyone and welcome to another one the 12 video. This one's a quick guide to, well, ATGMs in general. So, you'll notice, there, as you notice, there's many different ATGM vehicles being added, such as the STRV81, IT1, uh, how to pronounce that German one, the, the RBDZ25 or something, for short, and the Sheridan. Now, I'll outline the Sheridan this year. You can only take one ammo type, you can only have heat, or you can have the ATGM, so it's one or the other. Sadly, you can't mix and match, like you can with other ammo types. So you can have 20 Sabos and 20 HE rounds. Sadly, you can't do that on the Sheridan, so it's one or the other. Now, I will outline this here on ATGM tanks, you'll see that the missile is exposed on nearly all of them, part of the Sheridan. Especially exposed on the British STRV-81. Well, Swedish, but they give it to the British. Essentially, this here means that if you hit that there rocket, it's going to explode and kill you and the guy beside you or anyone around you. So, if MG fire hit it, it will turn it red. If shrapnel hit it, it'll detonate them. So, you've got to be very careful with this aspect. As I made a dickish move and it killed both of us from one shot, the shrapnel from the guy dying beside me destroyed the ATGMs and killed me. As you've probably seen me being a dick on another video. But there's many different aspects to ATGMs. Now, control wise, even more realistic on the tanks such as the IT1, as you'll see in this test drive here, as unrealistic, it will be controlled by the mouse if you got set up that way mainly. So if you aim, the missile will follow that aiming pattern. But just to show you once it loads up here. So I'll aim, say, there, and I'll slowly turn the mouse, and it'll turn on the target. As you see, as you saw there, it's a lot, that's the, I think that's more due to the fact there's only one weapon type on this here one. It should be the same for the German one. Now onto the British one, it's a bit more complicated, where it involves the up, down, left and right keys on the right hand side of your keyboard. As I will demonstrate now. Though I think this is mainly due to the fact it's both got, that it's got an 84 pounder cannon. I think that's more due to the, that reason in this test drive. Is the ATGMs have about a three kilometer range for both all the, for all of them actually they have about a three kilometer range on them. Though they're only really effective up to about 1.5 kilometers in my personal aspect of them. As you can see. Same, no cursor. Shoot. It goes straight for it. Now, when I fire off an ATGM here, as you can see, it doesn't track my mouse. I just go straight, straight, straight. I'll just ground that one. There. As you can see, I ground it in the far distance. Now, if I fire it off, and I use my march keys. I can direct it directly onto the target. I think it's more a mechanic for balancing on the steer tank due to the fact that it can have multiple ammo types and it needs a way to control it. So this allows it to give it a fair balance. So that's a quick guide on how to use the ATGM. So it's, if you fire off, if you press up, it'll go down. If you press down, it'll go up. And left and right is normal. It should actually be expansion left and right. But up on the marshal put it down. If you press down it will send it up. Or you can correct them keys in the settings. I think you can, I'm not sure not that one, but I'm pretty sure you can. Anyways. The next aspect of them. Do they always kill their target? Is a simple answer is no. The ATGMs can ricochet. Or not detonate. I've had a few experiences. Though Nine t like nearly all they'll nearly detonate all the times, but most of the times if it if it detonates by a skim, you'll damage the target, but it'll only shrapnel actually enter it and kill it, and maybe injure a crew member or destroy a module. So it may take one or two ATGMs, depending on how well armored it is. As uh, it's only they've got about 500 mil penetration, average 500 600 mil. This one's got 500 at 90 degree. And 250 at 30 degree. 
I'm noticing the Type 50, sorry, not the Type, it's not, I might as well, I don't think that's the Japanese stuff. I'm thinking on the, T, on the T54, if you hit the turret on the top of it, you're not always guaranteed to kill. It'll detonate, but only minor bits of shrapnel will go into the turret, and I'll kill or damage a few crew, crew members and a few components. Notice that in a few units, that it only manages to do some minor damage due to overpen or the detonates, it detonates outside the tank and not actually inside it causing the penetration. This uh, this mechanic alert can make, can make it very deadly to the tank beside it because it can spray, shra spray shrapnel everywhere. So it could be a fair, it's a very deadly mechanic but it can also be the bane of the ATGM. Exposing it for about 15 seconds roughly, well 12.6 seconds for it to be able to fire again. Though in the case of the IT-1, it's quite well armoured, 100mm on the front at 60 degrees. If as long as you angle that frontal armour well, it's nearly impenetrable and don't expose the size too much. Terror-wise is the same aspect. There's one major weak spot that there's here in the top patch. If you shoot there, it is dead. You'll die instantly. Like, there's no stopping getting shot. You see, there's no stopping around here. Sort of try X and that off there with the weak cross there to show that's the weak spot in the tank. That's your major weak spot here. On the turret and on the front. Now, if the lower glaze is exposed, much like the T-54's fuel tank is there, so it's an it'll get set on fire and more likely detonate. So you can see the ammunition is kept in the center in this one, so it's a bit of a pain to detonate that ammunition unless you strike in that weak spot. So, on to the British one again. It'll have, it fires off three rounds consecutively, and it takes about a minute to two minutes to reload them three shots, so you need to make all of them count. But it also has another mecha mecha uh, mechanism to defend itself, and that's its main gun here. It's a 84mm or 20 pounder QF, QQF with 285mm penetration with a saber. So it's, it is equally well defended. Its armor and other hand is quite like paper. It's 76 in the front, 89 inside of the turret, 154 in the front, and 50 on top there. Now, don't get me wrong, but the tank's well angled. It's hold down in a good position, or it's moving. It can be a very hard target to penetrate, especially on the front, because the angles on it. Though the most tanks you need to be care careful about when engaging with AT GMs is two tanks. Sorry, it's actually three tanks, actually, to be exact. It's the Chieftain, due to its angles on the front of its turret, that is the main issue, and the angles on the front of its hull. The one saying that there, due to the shrapnel, is more likely will do penetration, but the shrapnel will more likely penetrate and do some damage as well. So you may be saved that way. Now, if you go on to the Mars, let's see which one have I got the Mars in. Uh, Mars. As you can see, well, when it loads up. Yes, I'm an anime fan. I love Infinite Stratos, but as you can see in the Mars, it's quite open. There's quite a lot of open areas. So if you hit here, you'll maybe only damage there, but you won't hit any critical points. So to actually ensure that you do critical damage to the Mars, you need to make sure that you hit the fuel tanks with it. Or the ammunition and hit it in the side there to hit the ammunition. But the issue is you can over penetrate very easily with ATGMs. So that and the openness off the Mars get, makes it a very painful target to fight. Now it usually takes about two to three ATGMs to actually kill Mars, in my experience. But in saying that, there it can be pretty easy to destroy, destroy if it's take if you're take out your shots. Like if you hit through a front cheek there, you'll more than likely hit the ammunition. In saying that, though the one more tank that is a bit of a pain for it. And it's not due to the hull armor, it's more due to the turret armor. And that's the T fifty four. T fifty four here. Its hull armor is not over and impressive, but nicely well angled. The issue comes when it hits the turret. Because of points, it's in excess of over 500 mil at 80 degrees. It's simply not penetrable. Now, here's the issue. If the ATGM hits 
here or anywhere along the top, it'll just do fragmentation damage into the turret. You've got a small chance of detonating ammunition, but you'll more than likely just cause harm to the crew. So your best bet, if you can, is to try and hit it here on the hull. That's my be that's your best bet on the hull, in the front of the turret. Here, don't hit the cheeks because you can actually ricochet your ATGM off it. I've had that. Sorry, drank, drank some coke before I done this here, and it's maybe a bit windy. Uh, essentially, I've had a few experiences where my ATGM is actually ricocheted. It's a nice mechanic that way, so they're trying to make it as far as possible. So the best way to deal with this one is just stick one directly into the front or the side of it if you can. Or the side of the turret. Because it's any, pretty much in the two weeks buffs. Don't try and avoid hitting the turret with the AT jams really. On this tank. Because it's of its angles and its curve. Other than that there. Every tank is pretty much easy to kill with an AT jam. It's easy pickings. And can be easily taken out. So. With this guide. I hope that everyone will learn how to easily enough use AT jams. But one thing you'll need to keep in mind when you're using the up down left and right is that there's about a second delay between the actual key and the ATGM the delay actually gets longer and longer the further away you get so keep that in mind when you're taking long distance shots that's why I say about the effective range in my opinion is about 1.5 kilometers instead of the actual 3 kilometer range that it says they can hit up to so that I hope this here small and quick guys helpful to everyone and hope everyone enjoys these new aspects and hope it well it's actually pretty well balanced in my opinion hope everyone's enjoying them and please like and subscribe see you all again in the next video that i upload bye